All right, let's uh, continue We're right where we left off before we were interrupted, talking about Tamerlane. So Tamerlane is a Turk and a Mongol combined, right? And he's a, uh, you know, comes a few generations after the Mongol conquest and the fall of the Ilkhanates of Persia and all the migrations of the Turks. Uh, and he is going to create his own empire, right? Uh, part of it's going to be in Persia, right after the Ilkhanate of Persia. Part of it's going to be in Central Asia, right after the fall of the Central Asian Khanate. He's going to build a capital, uh, or going to establish a capital at Samarkand, uh, which is in Central Asia, modern-day Kazakhstan. And uh, Samarkand is like this huge, you know, wealthy city uh, because it's literally right in the, you know, around the center of the Silk Road. And um, his his power, uh, his empire grew strong enough. He, knows, he of course was very destructive and violent and killed a whole bunch of people. Uh, he will threaten other areas like India and Russia and, and Anatolia as well, and all his like neighboring regions. But his empire was also short lived, right? Mainly because he you know he failed to centralize it. He didn't have a bureaucracy. Uh, didn't have a good you know tax collection system. Uh, but this is what his empire would have looked like, right? Samarkand would be up here, right? That would be the capital of uh, of um, of Tamerlane's empire, right? So, you know, it was stretched into India, it was stretched into Anatolia, it was stretched up into what Russia is. Um, so it was very weak uh, and, you know, it didn't last long for that reason. Now, what we see is after the fall of Tamerlane, after the empire, we see three empires come to power. And these empires will, because they're descendants of the Turks and the Mongols, because they have all this like, integration of these people who migrated into the regions, we're going to see that they are going to be known as the gunpowder empires. Because they're going to utilize and maximize gunpowder technology to establish and conquer, and, you know, conquer regions and establish their empire. And we're going to talk more about these because they're going to like grow into, you know, into importance in the next time period, time period four, in the, uh, you know, early modern era. And, uh, but just to let you know what they are, they're called the Ottoman Empire, right, which lasts for about 500 years. The Safavid Empire, which is in Persia, modern day Iran, and the Mughal Empire, which is going to be in India. So these are the Islamic gunpowder empires, and they're all going to be descendants of the Mongols and the Turks, All right? And here you see the three empires, the Ottomans, the Safavids, and the Mughals. Uh, and they're all going to be Muslim, of course, right? Islamic empires. All right, uh, the last thing we're going to look at is big picture stuff. And one of the most important historical key concepts we need to know is, of course, cultural diffusion. And we see this occur a lot during time period three. We see this occur a lot thanks to Mongols. So, uh, we already mentioned before in previous chapters about the expansion of Afro-Eurasian, right? Africa, Europe, and Asia. The train networks, where there's the Silk Road, the trans sahara or the Indian Ocean, right? And these three train networks expand more and more, uh, and technologies are going to spread along these trade routes. Right, through war as well. Uh, so compass, gunpowder, steel, paper, right? A lot of these, of course, are Chinese origin, right? But they're going to make their way across the trade networks, make their way across the oceans, make their way across the deserts, and, you know, find a home in other parts of Africa, Europe, and Asia. The Mongol conquest is going to facilitate the transfer of technology, especially gunpowder, of course, uh, but also the Crusades, Right? And remember, the Crusades is going to cause Europe to open up to the rest of the world uh, like it hadn't done before. Uh, another one, train network, of course, you can mention is the Mediterranean, because this has been around since forever. Uh, but the Mediterranean is still up and running and still, you know, important. And here you see some of the technologies. Um, when you read about Europe, you should know that kind of like the first time we see gunpowder weapons in Europe is during uh, the Hundred Years' War, where the... Um, you know, the French and the English are fighting for about 100 years, uh, and they're going to start using the earliest, you know, what we might call guns, right, rifles and stuff like that, uh, muskets. And they're, you know, super inaccurate, super crappy, but they start being better. And the Europeans 
start developing these technologies more and more because the Europeans are always going to be fighting each other. So as they constantly fight each other, uh, they always try to find new, better technology to kill each other. All right, so even though gunpowder is a Chinese invention, the Europeans are really going to take full advantage, right? Those Islamic gunpowder empires are also going to do the same thing and expand that use of technology, gunpowder tech. Uh, crops and agriculture is also going to diffuse. We talk about how citrus, right? Citrus um, originally it comes from you know from Asia, Southeast Asia, and it makes its way across the trade networks, right, into the Mediterranean, right. Um, so we see the use of citrus, and of course it doesn't rhyme to Europe until after the Crusades. Sugar is another one. Oh boy, how sugar is going to change world history. And we see that sugar originates in, in India, right? It originates in India, um, but over time, the Muslims, they get addicted to sugar. And they're going to bring it over. They're going to bring it to Mesopotamia. They're going to bring it to Egypt. They're going to bring it all over the Mediterranean, right? And take a wild guess, who are they going to get to work on the sugar cane plantations? You guessed it. Sub-Saharan Africans, slaves, and the Europeans, you know, when they reconquer Spain, right, during the Reconquista, right, and they reconquer, you know, the islands in the Mediterranean, right, like Sicily, which is down here, right, and they see plantations, and they see slaves, and they see Sub-Saharan Africans, and they say, hmm, that's a good idea, right, because sugarcane plantations require a lot of labor, and it's always nicer when a slave can do it all for you. So citrus and sugar is going to change, you know, your world history. The uh, in, uh, rival of horse collar and fertilizers, right? Again, those are, you know, kind of like Chinese inventions are also going to help spread um, diffuse agricultural crops, right? Like rice is going to make its way across, uh, you know, your, uh, from Asia to Europe and to Africa. All right, so cultural diffusion, again, a big, big, big key concept for Unit 3 and trade and the Mongols and war and stuff like that all play a big role in it. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. I'll see you next class when we're going to write about the Mongols and what they did and what they didn't do. All right, see you next time.